World Tour 15 takes us to Circuit Gillies Vellanoub here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada for the running of the Impact de Montreal 300. Just two races left before the chase begins and these drivers are trying to win their way back into the chase in order to compete for the championship. Sean Harpel starts on the pole. Ooh, Seth Cole nearly had contact with Abby Sachs, but we have our first caution on the first turn of the race. A big wreck. Dylan Young, Sam Rogers got piled up and everybody else trying to escape a huge traffic jam sets up because of the incident and you're going to see a lot more of these wrecks coming here in Montreal, that's what it was known for, a lot of wrecking, a lot of controversial finishes as well, I'm hoping we don't get one here so that a lot of fans don't get out angry about the um, officials here. But we have more wrecks later on on the restart. Even on the restart, they're still wrecking. Down the S-curve, they're still spinning. This, this, Even though the track has been on every season of the NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series, these drivers are still never getting the hang of this track, of these S-curves, these wide and tight corners. And it really makes for some bumpy racing and pretty ugly wreck fests. So, but we can still expect to see some battles every so often. And here is one coming up right now. They were pit stops that jumbled the field that gave Angel Navarro the lead. But here comes Justin Robert. Bert, Robert's already in the chase with a win. Navarro was going to be in the chase with a win in Daytona, but he spoiled that race and so he was suspended. And also, he was not eligible to be in the chase even though he had that one win. And no matter, if, even if he does get another win this season, Navarro won't be eligible for the chase this year. Another caution came out this time, the 7 of Alex Hawkins. Contact with everybody else, he spun in the middle of the corner, and a couple more drivers got damaged along with him. Even the pole setter, Sean Harpo, had damage. He got a hard hit on the 7, his day was done. And more pit stops jumbled the field during the caution, and it gave the lead to O'Neill Balvin in the number 5. Abby Sachs looks to take second place from Eric Powers, but Eric is able to hold on. And right down the final S-curve, we had another caution. A big wreck with Jacob Waller and Pichu with big damage. But speaking of Pichu, his teammate, his teammate Luke Walker is the new leader after more pit stops jumbled out the field of the caution. You'd be surprised how many, there were a lot of pit stops during the caution period and jumbled up the field a lot. It jumbled the leaders a lot, so at least that part was kept different um, other, than the, other, than, other than the constant wrecking that we see here today. Isaiah Burnesh looks to take the lead. Luke Walker hits the wall that leaves the door open for the 11 machine. Here comes the S-curve trying to make the move. No, he gets loose. His tires got shot at the wrong time. He just spun out while trying to take the lead and lost a lot of positions. Seth Cole and Aaron Lukewarm involved. Cody Hagen is in it. Another caution is out with 10 laps to go. And now Bernash has dropped to third place surprisingly even though he spun out in the, the S-curve. He could have lost more positions but so thankfully is able to stay in third place right now at the moment. He's battling with second with Ryan Casey down the curve. Casey right up into Burnesh and they spin and rack and Burnesh is flipping. Pargel Alonso's in it. Oh boy, a big pile up to, uh, and the caution flag is out yet again. I, I think that's the fifth caution we've had today at this track. My goodness, a big wreck fest as always in Montreal, but it always leads up to weird finishes. And we might be, we might see one soon. Johnny Garner gonna battle for second place, and he gets the pass. O'Neill Balvin took the restart lead, but he has to come down pit road. He doesn't have enough fuel to make it. There's Luke Walker. He dropped down to fifth after pit stops, but these guys apparently needed another pit stop to fill the tanks. Apparently that wasn't enough. Lopez takes the lead. He gets a good lead over everybody else. Dylan Thoreau's right behind him, but he's a lap down at this point, so other than, uh, well, well, he's got to have to let Dylan Thoreau pass by right here because he is lapped, and, well, he's getting in the way of his lead. So Lopez is going to give the 43 the green light to go ahead or to go around him and probably get his lap back. And now Lopez still leading. He's hoping to hold on with four laps to go. He he was the winner at most, but he's looking to go two for two in Canada. 
Um, looking for a second consecutive win this season. Hopes to lock up that chase spot maybe with two wins. But he has to come down pit road. He runs out of gas and that hands the lead over to Connor Breton. And is Breton going to take a pit stop? They were nine seconds apart before Lopez pitted. But Connor Breton's going to stay out and is going to take the white flag with one lap to go. He developed a mere eight second lead over O'Neill Balvin. And he's hoping to save enough fuel to, in order to win the race, to get his second win this season. He had a win last season. No, wait, no, he didn't win last season. He had a win this season, I meant to say. And now he's looking for his second win of season 15. And his 10th career NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series would be. He would be only the 11th driver to win 10 or more, to win 10 or more races in the NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series. If Balvin's going to have a shot, it's going to have to be that Breen makes a mistake in one of the tough, tight corners, and Balvin would get close. But right now, Connor Breen's going to try to carefully navigate through these tricky turns and save fuel at the same time. I do apologize for the many camera changes, because this track does not have the very best cameras of any NR Town 3 track. I'm trying the best I can to give you the best views of the track. That's why you're seeing most close-up uh, cars during the wrecks because th those were the best views I could show you the entire wrecks of. Down the carousel and into the final chicane. One more final straightaway and then the, one more chicane. The row is really slow. He's stuck on the track. Can Connor Breen go by? He does. Wow, a huge scare there. If Breen had hit the row, we would have had something of a finish. But Connor Breen's going to make this an anticlimactic ending and is going to come off the final S curve. And Connor Breen is going to win the Impact of Montreal 300 at Circuit Gillies Vellanoum in Montreal, Canada. His 10th career NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series win and his second of season 15. That'll lock him up in the chase. So the chase field is almost set, actually. It'll be set after 349. Check Facebook uh, for points. And the chase spot, the winners are also going to be there as well. So, hope you guys check Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, don't worry. I will have an update video on to see who's in the chase to let you guys know who's in the chase and what the points look like after the World Tour 15. So, stick around for that. Next up, the last race before the chase, the old 349, home of the turn of death. Will the chase field be set after that race? Stay tuned and we'll see you at 349.